Brenda. Good, James Wright. How's everybody? Okay. So we are live. God bless you, Facebook. Those who are with us on conference call tonight. We have a special guest on tonight. Sister Brenda Brockman back. <laughs> After someone we prayed, so this answer prayer on the line tonight, someone we pray for who's been through many trials and tribulations, but the Lord has restored her. We also bless the memory of our dear sister Helen, who passed away today. Uh, thank God we know where she is. She's one of my mothers in the Lord. So I'm feeling some kind of way tonight, but we must go on, accept what has happened, and trust God has her in his hands, that she's no longer suffering. So we thank God tonight for the word of God that keeps us going. Amen. Amen. The word of God, the fellowship of the saints, um, the joy of the Lord is our strength. And we're grateful for that. So we're going to have a word of prayer. We'll jump in. We're, we're going to finish up chapter 10, Romans 10. We've been doing our continuous study. We're dealing with um, the Jewish people. Paul um, enters, enters into chapters 9, 10, and 11. Um, his continuation dealing with the Jewish people that passed, the present, and chapter 11 will deal with the future. So as we, after we have a word of prayer, we'll go as our God shall God, oh, shall God tonight. Father, we're grateful tonight for your multitude of mercies and blessings upon our lives. We thank you, O oh God, for being able to restore. We thank you, God, for your sovereignty in all things. We accept your sovereignty and we trust you with all our hearts tonight to have your way. Please be with the bereaved families tonight, O oh God, in a special way. Son, daughter, husband, friends, family, sisters and brothers, please, O oh God, be a source of, of comfort to the families that are bereaved, not only the ones that we know of, but so many other people, we do not know their names. We do not know their stories, but they all have a story to tell. We pray, God, you be a source of comfort to your people tonight. We pray also, God, that just as you heal one of ours, that you would heal those who understand of our voice and those who do not hear our voice. That just as you're able to restore and to heal, oh God, we ask that you would do that. That you, oh God, would enter into someone's um, bed of affliction tonight. And that you would let your healing virtues flow. We know you're a healer because you said you, you would and you could. We know that you have the power. We're just beseeching you tonight, oh God, to heal. And most of all, God, we pray for the hearts and the minds of people, oh God, who are troubled, emotionally distraught, those who are trying to overthrow governments, those who are trying to, uh, in their devious way, and even tagging your name upon it. We pray that you will forgive, that you will be merciful, oh God, and that you, God, will bring this country to a place of rest, resting you, oh God, resting your presence. So we now commit out this night to you. Be glorified in us, O oh God. We give ourselves to your spirit. We do not have the ability to do anything without your spirit. So please guide our thoughts and our words and even bless the ears of each hearer. And we pray tonight, God, that someone because of tonight will be encouraged. That someone, O oh God, will cause the angels to rejoice and be saved. To give their hearts to you, Jesus Christ, we pray. That somehow, God, this message would reach we reach a fertile ground. As we plant and water, God, we pray that you will cause it to grow. Give the increase, O oh God. Send the increase. Let your word go forth and accomplish that which you purposed it to do. Let it not come, come forth. Let it go forth and bring forth much fruit. We pray in Jesus' name. As we delve into the word of God and seek and step into your, with your wisdom and, and to your knowledge, we acknowledge that we don't have the capacity to contain the things that are here. We don't have the capacity to even explain the things that are here. But bless our feeble efforts tonight. And with just one touch, hallelujah, of your spirit, just one touch of your spirit, we know you'll guide us tonight, oh God. Just one touch, oh God, by your guidance, we know that everything will be all right. So we commit our way to you and our lives to you. And we do give you praise and we give you honor and we give you glory for your name is worthy of that. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. amen. Give God a hallelujah. Amen. 
Hallelujah. Amen. He is worthy. Yes. He's keeping us alive, y'all. Amen. Amen. Keeping us. Psalm 91. Under his wings we shall trust. No evil shall befall us. Neither shall any plague come near our dwelling. We're just going to trust the Lord for every person listening, every person calling in. We're trusting God to keep you, to be a blessing, to, to bless your lives in an unusual way. And oftentimes God will take us through unusual circumstances because he has an unusual blessing for our lives. So we thank God, amen, that not only does sickness come, but thank God healing comes. The storms come, but the sunshine also comes. Amen. So winter time comes, and so does spring. To everything there is a season. Amen. But the Bible tells us in Psalm 1 that, that because our roots, because we're planted by the rivers of water, we will bear fruit in our season. Amen. Tell God, I want this to be my season. Let this be my season. The reason why the tree is not destroyed through the storm is because it got a root system. Amen. How many got your root system? Be sure, be very sure your soul is anchored in the Lord. Amen. So we thank God tonight as we begin to close out this 10th chapter. We stopped off last week talking about where faith comes from. What a powerful verse, verse 17. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by God's word. And we, we went on down to see in verse 18 that God has given a message to Israel and also to the whole world. There's, where there's no excuse because God has given uh, two types of revelation. He's, through nature, he's revealed himself. The heavens declare the glory of God, Psalm, Psalm 19. The earth shows his handiwork. He's also given us his word. So we have the, the, the testimony of nature that reaches to all walks of life. And we have the testimony of the word of God, which is God's revelation to us to tell us how we ought to live. Amen. So we have these two. So no one has an excuse to say, I do not know. Because God has made it plain to all that he is king of kings and lord of lords. Amen. So um, the whole world is basically, and we, because we're focusing on Israel in particular, the bottom line, verse 18, tells us that um, they have, have they not heard? Yes, that verily their sound went out into all the earth, their words into all the ends of the world. That's the revelation of God through, his, through creation and through his word gone forth to the point that uh, all men really stand guilty. All have sinned and fallen short of God's glory. <clears throat> Verse 19 says, but I say, did not Israel know? Paul's asking a question. He's giving us a question because he's going to answer that question. He says, yeah, they knew. Israel knew because Moses said this back in Deuteronomy. Moses said, um, uh, I will provoke you to jealousy by them that are no people. And by a foolish nation, I will anger you. Israel, who God chose and delivered from Egypt, began to worship other gods. And God said that he was jealous because they had left him. And he says, just like he was jealous over them, he said he was going to raise up other nations. And he was going to make them jealous because of them. He was going to provoke them to jealousy. And those other nations, or other people he's talking about, those foolish nations, he's talking about the non-Jews, the Gentiles, which includes you and I. So God told them way back in Deuteronomy that because of their rebellion, that their rebellion would cause an opening up of the word of God to other nations. And God would bless those other nations to let Israel see how good God is so they will be jealous to want to come back to serve the true and living God. And we'll see that bear it out, especially in uh, chapter 11 as we talk about, Paul talks about that God is not through with his people. Let me digress just for a minute, or back up a little bit, because these three chapters, 9, 10, 11, form a trilogy, a trilogy to deal with um, the children of Israel in particular. We had in chapter 9, just to, for summary, we had Israel's past election. God elected them, but only a remnant, we'll talk about that again tonight too, a remnant of them would be, would be saved. That's their past selection or election. Chapter 10, we're about to finish up, is their present uh, rejection. They're now as a nation in a place where uh, collectively as a nation, they have rejected the king. John 1 tells us that he came unto his own and his own received him not. But as to as many as received him, 
He says to those he will give power to become the sons of God. So when Israel rejected their, their God, God moved on to other nations. It's always been in the Bible to the Jew first and also to the Greek. When Jesus came in the book, in the uh, Gospels, he told his disciples to only go to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Not that there weren't other lost sheep, but he said the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And then Johnny tells us he had other sheep he had to bring in. And I know some cultists believe they are the other sheep, but no, the other sheep are the lost ones, the non-Jewish people, or the church God is forming. All right? So God is forming a, a body of Christ, and he's doing that today in the, in the, in the world. So that's what he's doing. He's uh, calling out from all nations uh, individuals that would trust Christ to form a body. All right? So here in verse 19, he says, Israel didn't know. He, he told Israel way back in Deuteronomy that he was going to anger them and uh, not anger them, but call, provoke them to jealousy by them that are no people. Where they considered the non-Jews. Jews thought they were exclusive. They missed their real call because God gave them so many privileges. We read about those privileges. God gave them so many privileges, but they did not uh, continue in faith. They did not. Uh, they did not walk in faith. They thought that their salvation could be achieved by works. And they rejected the real truth of God. All the way through the Bible, you see it's a history of constant rejection and unfaithfulness. But in the midst of all that unfaithfulness and rejection, God always reserved a remnant. A remnant is just that, a remnant is, the remnant in Israel is the doctrine that talks about within the uh, nation Israel, there is a spiritual Israel. And God has always had, the remnant would be a small part of the whole. God has always had people reserved just for himself. No matter how bad the nation went, there was always a, you know, Isaac or a, a, it was always a Daniel. It was always a Shared Meshach. It was always a Isaiah. There's always someone that was there that was reserved to be a witness for God. God would never be without a witness. And we even go to the book of Revelation where the 144 are clear, 144,000 are clearly identified um, 12,000 from each tribe of Israel, clearly identified. Many people have tried to, to make themselves 144,000. No, the Bible tells us who they are. They're witnesses that will be testifying during the tribulation period, and people will be saved because of Israel, Israel's witness, all right? And we did that when we studied the book of Revelation, all right? So um, I'm reading then verse 20, but Isaiah is very bold and said, I was found by them that sought me not, and I was made manifest to them that asked not after me. So God is saying, he's coming from Isaiah, I believe like the 65th chapter, he's, he's talking about in Isaiah, um, he's saying that those people who did not seek me found me. I was found by those. He says in Isaiah that um, I was found by them that sought me not. The people that weren't looking for him found him. And I was manifest of them that asked not of me. Those people in the acts of God were found them. He's speaking of the non-Jewish people. And he goes on to say that those people who weren't seeking found me. But he says to Israel in verse 21, all day long, I stretch out my hands unto what? A disobedient and gainsaying. That means to speak against, go against our people. God says all day. How long has a day lasted? It's lasted for hundreds of years. And God says to them, people who didn't ask of me have found me, but the people I presented myself to consistently talk against me, go are disobedient and unbelieving. But he says, my hands are still stretched out. Isn't that good news? God said, although you have rejected me, my hands, the invitation is still there for you to come and serve. And I thank God today his hands are stretched out still. Are you glad about that? Yes. And you know how far his hands stretched out? Oh, y'all can give God a praise tonight. Around the world. His hands stretched out on the cross, didn't he? Mm -hmm. To embrace the whole world. That's how much he stretches his hands out. He says, I think so much of you. I love you so much. You know, I don't give things to you. I give you myself. And because I give you myself, everything else will fall in place. Amen. Amen. And you know, uh, that's, the best, that's the best thing you could ever have. Well, I said the best person you ever have is Jesus Christ. Remember, um, God had the 12 tribes of Israel. And I love to think about this. 
but he had a particular tribe, the tribe of Levi, that he did not give any inheritance to, no block off of land like the other. He said, your inheritance will be in the midst of the other brethren. He said, because I am your portion. My, 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 my. Can y'all go with me tonight? He tell, told the, the, the Levites he was their portion. He was their inheritance. And what a rich thing that we have. Someone sung it like that. I think a songwriter says this, thou my everlasting portion. More than friends are life to me. Amen. God is our portion. Amen. You don't have to worry about houses and land. There's a lot of people trying to go back into the Old Testament and claim promises that weren't really for us. God has told us in the book of Ephesians, he's blessed us with all spiritual blessings. Our blessings are spiritual. Israel's blessings were earthly for land and wealth. And that's God is still going to give to them what he promised them. We have people today who try to make uh, the church Israel. He said that God has done away with his people. And Paul's going to respond to this in chapter 11. He's going to let us know, no, God has not um, done away with his people. God has not replaced Israel with the church. Israel is uh, a body that God is still going to deal with. Their rejection is like, is this, listen to this. Their rejection is partial because God has a remnant. But it's also limited. God has a certain time. All right. where well, he's going to accept them back. But he has a purpose also. And it includes you and I. So I hope I'm trying to make this as plain, as simple as possible. So we can see that God has a plan. The bottom line. God, it may look like sometimes that things are out of control. It may look like sometimes that things are, are not working out the way we think they should be. We may see. We can hear God's call. But we don't see any evidence of what he's doing. But trust the word of God. Because God's going to work his plan out. In his way. In his time. You know I've been praying through. All these election things going on. And all these lawsuits going on. And all this election stuff happening. I've been praying through. And I'm watching God uh, remove. Um, the obstacles out of the way. And I really appreciate. What um, I see in Joe Biden. Because he's not dealing with any of this stuff. He's just planning his uh, the people who will sit with him. He's planning his his um, workers, his his um, those who are leading with him, his staff. He's simply placing things, getting things in place while all this confusion is going on. He doesn't even address it. And all we can just learn from that. If we can just learn, let's just work the plan of God. Amen. Let's do the plan of God and not be distracted from all the outside um, distractions that are there. When you know what God has given to you, you don't have to entertain distractions. So I decided I'm going to do the same thing. I want to know what's going on, but I'm not going to let it distract me from God. Amen. And this is what um, he has done. He has not entertained the, the, the tweets and the, 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 uh, all the court hearings and all the 50-some lawsuits. He, he has not addressed them. He has not, all he's doing is getting his people ready to take over in January 20. So I like this, and we see that He's setting for us an example. If you hold your peace, the Lord will fight your battle. Amen. Amen. If you hold your peace, the Lord, you don't have to, you don't have to do evil for evil. You don't have to render evil. You don't do evil for evil. When people are evil to you, you we're supposed to send back blessing. Mm -hmm. Why? Because we trust God to take care of that. Exactly. That's what we're supposed to do. Be not <laughs> overcome with evil. We're going to come into that. We, when we get chapter 12 and on down to the rest of the book, we're gonna uh, all Paul's gonna do is give practical application of what he taught through the um, first 11, cha 11 chapters of the book. Tell us how to really put on really practical down to earth instructions. We'll get to in a few weeks. All right. So we go on down to verse 21, the last verse of this chapter. But to Israel he says, all day long I have stretched out my hands unto a disobedient and gainsaying people. I'm so glad that God is merciful. Amen. He says to Israel. Folks have found me, but you rejected me, but the offer still stands. All right. So we move down to chapter 11, verse 1. I say then, hath God cast away his people? Now, this would um, this is very intriguing because God chose Israel and he mocked out a plan for their lives. But now it seems like they're not in position where they're supposed to be as far as scripture is concerned, it seems like. So... God has uh, set them aside for a period of time. And some people are saying that 
God's not dealing with them anymore, but that's not true. All right. So Paul is going, he's asking a question, has God cast away his people? Because that would mean that we are now uh, God's spiritual people. If he cast his people, Israel, away, what does it say he wouldn't cast us away? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But God has not cast away his people. They have only fallen for a temporary period of time, and not all of them have fallen. And in this chapter 11, Paul gives witnesses that attest to the fact God has not cast away his people. And the first one he uses is himself. The very one writing the scripture under God's inspiration says, because I've been saved. Let you know that God has not cast away his people. He also gives us Elijah. Elijah thought he was alone. He also gives us um, uh, the Gentiles. We read down, and then we'll see God himself as a witness and the patriarchs, the fathers. So these, this is what Paul is doing in this chapter 11. He's showing that God still has a future purpose for Israel and letting us see our place <laughs> in that, all right? So he says that God, does God cast away his people? God forbid. In other words, no. Why? Because Paul said, I'm a witness because Paul is Jewish. Matter of fact, the, that's all the church started with Jewish men. The Jewish men were, the whole purpose for Israel in the first place was to share the gospel, was to share the good news, not isolate themselves as a, as a nation. As a nation, they isolated themselves and looked down on other people, but the whole thing was God called them out to be a witness to the true and living God. And instead of them being a witness to the true and living God, they began to take on the characteristics of the nations that were around them, the nations that God was destroying because of their action. That's why they were judged, but guess what? God still didn't change his mind about them. But in that picture of us, aren't you glad that God never changed his mind about you? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, if I was God, and thank God, y'all better thank God I'm not God, because I wouldn't put up with the stuff I see. If I was God, I would have gave up on me. Because I'm not trustworthy. How many things have I done and still do? But I thank God that his hands are still stretched out. Amen? Amen. He says, um, God forbid, God hasn't cast away his people. He says, what? For I'm a testimony, God hasn't cast away his people. He says, I also am an Israelite of the seed of Abraham, of the tribe of Benjamin. And uh, Dr. Luke, who recorded the book of Acts, he gives Paul's testimony three times in the book of Acts. Not so much because we didn't hear it the first time, but because... That's the testimony to the Jews that God is still saving. God is working with Jewish people. When Paul was able to lift his testimony, each time he did, he was able to share what God was doing. Paul even referred to himself in the Corinthians as one who's born out of due time. He said that he's one of the Jews that was prematurely born. The whole nation will be born later on, but right now he's one of those. God has always reserved for him a Jewish remnant. No matter what time there is right now, there was called Messianic Jews. Matter of fact, I listened to one today on um, YouTube. I can't call his name. He wears the the um, beanie. And they, they may call it something else. I'm not sure. But he um, is talking to Jewish people. And he's letting them know that we're supposed to be connected with the Gentiles in Christ. And I'm listening because I'm just so intrigued. Because we approach the Bible without that rich understanding of a Jewish culture. But when Paul wrote the book and those who wrote New Testament, they're assuming you understand the Jewish culture. And so I enjoy listening to Messianic leaders because they give me a nuance, a different nuance of scripture. And so God has a remnant today that we have. What's the difference? The difference is, is that there's some Jews are still waiting for Messiah to come. And some Jews accept the fact he has come and his name is Jesus Christ. Some Jews even believe that there's not a person that's coming, but that their nation is going to be the Messiah. Mm -hmm. So they have different belief systems. So this is what you have out here today. All right. So you see the community of the Jews. They walk a certain, they walk, they live in the area. They go, they walk to synagogue. They're still, they have a seat in their, in their temple, in their synagogue that's set aside for the Messiah to come. They're still waiting for him to come. But those of us that are believers in Christ Jesus believe he has come. That's why Paul suffered so much persecution because the Jews did not want to accept 
that someone like him, a carpenter's son, someone who died on the cross, could actually be their king. All right? So um, Paul is saying, I'm, the, I'm a testimony to the fact that God has not done away with his people. God has not cast away his people in verse 2, which he foreknew. Um, what he not, do you not know the script the scripture says to Isaiah of, of Elijah? How he maketh intercession to God against Israel, saying, The uh, Lord, they have killed all thy prophets and dig down all thine altars, and I am left alone, and they seek my life. This man was going through major depression. I'm talking about a prophet who did miracle after miracle, who withstood right before this time 450 prophets of Baal and had them slaughtered. But you know what happened after this incident on Mount Carmel? Um, Jezebel, y'all know about Jezebel? When Ahab went home, Ahab went home and told Jezebel what Elijah had done, she said, I'm going to do the same thing to him this day. And he ran to Sinai, on Mount Horeb, and hid and stayed there. And God kept asking him, what are you doing here? He, and he began to say, Lord, they killed everybody. I'm the only one left. Anybody felt that way? Nobody is doing like I'm doing. Nobody got like I did. I'm the only one. He was, a, he was going through, here's a man of God. Here's a prophet of God who was going through major depression. Some people think because I'm a child of God, depression doesn't affect me. Life doesn't hit me. But here's a man of God who went through depression and who had to owe me and a little pity party for itself. God got him together and said, go do the work. This is what God would do. God said, what are you doing here? God would ask you that. What are you doing in this kind of state? What are you doing in this kind of mindset? I just use you to do a mighty work. And here you are running. He stood against 450 prophets. Now he's running from one woman. So Jezebel was a piece of work, wasn't he? Mm -hmm. He <laughs> He stood up to 450 men, but he's running from one, the threat of one woman, and he's hiding out. He's thinking that he's all about himself, but God says this, verse 4, but what saith the answer of God to him? God says what? I have reserved to who? To myself, 7,000 men who have not bowed the knee, have not bowed the knee to the image of Baal. Little did he know that God had people reserved for himself. God had a remnant that was there. And we'll see this, uh, verse 5, he says, even so, even, even so then, at what? This present time, also what? There is a remnant. There's our word remnant. According to what? The election, the election of grace. It's not by works, it's by grace. So God is saying, right to this day when Paul was writing, and to this day we live in now, there is a remnant. And I cited to you that are Messianic Jews, and they are the remnant. And don't be don't get disturbed by the word remnant. It just simply means a fragment of a larger part. There's a lot of Jews, but only a fragment of those Jews are the elect of that remnant. Alright? The remnant or the or the or a small portion of the whole that God has reserved for himself. God is an awesome God, isn't he? And aren't you glad that God has put you on reserve? You wouldn't be in him if he had not chosen you from the foundation of the world. You would not be in Christ Jesus. Amen. You would not be in him unless he made a choice. You haven't chosen me, he says in John. I've chosen you, John. I think, believe in John 15. You haven't chosen me. I have chosen you and ordained you. So we know that God, he told Jeremiah before I formed in the womb, I knew you. Jeremiah, believe this first chapter of Jeremiah. I knew you. So God is knows about us before the foundation of the world, had planned for us before the foundation of the world, chose us in Christ Jesus. We are the chosen elect of God, his spiritual people. Blessed with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. The, children, the, the Israelites are God's earthly people, his earthly calling people. He promised the land. He promised a certain portion of the land. And they have really never inherited all the land that God promised them yet, but they will. They've always been a people who have strayed away, similar to us. And right now, they got, well, I let the scriptures, the scripture will explain what's going on. God has a purpose in that. So the, uh, God has a purpose and plan in everything. He, even in, in Israel's departure from him, he still has a plan. But this election of Israel is according to God's grace. 
It's not by what they've done. It's not by works. It's not because they've been good. It's in God's grace God has chosen this remnant. All right. And if by grace, verse 6 tells us, if by grace, then there's no more of works. It can't be both. All right. And this is often what's happening in the gospel. This is what the book of Galatians is about, where there were Jewish people who were coming after Paul preached and telling the Gentiles that they had to become Jews first before they could be saved. They had to be circumcised and keep certain laws in order to be saved. And Paul would not settle for that. Acts chapter 15, there was a great council that was met there, and it was established in that council that no you're, you're saved by faith in Christ Jesus alone. But here, if you try to mix grace and works, you have neither one. Because it says here, otherwise grace is no more grace. If you can work for your salvation, that means you don't have grace. You have one you work for. It's works. You have one another. But if it be not, if it be a work, if you work for something, that means it's not, it, it's not of grace. Y'all see the two together? Uh, if you work for something, that means you earned it. But if God gives it to you by grace, that means it's a gift of God. And that's what salvation is. You're saved, Ephesians 2, by grace through faith. It is a gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. Now, as I'm, while I'm on this, James talks, James talks about a dead faith. James tells us that faith without works is dead. So now we're looking at not an unsaved person, we're looking at a saved person. All right? Paul is speaking of you cannot be saved by doing something. You only get saved by accepting Christ as a saving Lord. But now James says, now that you're saved, there ought to be some proof. Someone said it like this. Faith alone saves. But saving faith is not alone. All right, so now that I'm saved, I work for God because I'm saved, not to be saved. Y'all follow that? I serve God not to be saved, but because I'm saved. I want to be holy before him in my motives, in my lifestyle, in my words, not to be saved, but because I'm saved. Now, I could be a good person and not be saved. There's many good people who do good things, who give a huge amount of money to charities, you know, all those philanthropists, always doing great things, but that doesn't mean they're saved. So being a good person doesn't make me a saved person. But what saves me is God's grace. But now that I'm saved by God's grace, that saving faith is not alone. All right. So Paul and James aren't contradicting each other. They're speaking about two different situations. Paul is speaking of you can't get, you cannot be saved by works. James is saying once you're saved, you ought to have some works. Amen. Y'all see the difference? Amen. All right. He says um, in verse six, and if by grace, then it is no more works. Otherwise, grace is no more grace, but it is of works. Uh, then it is no more grace. So grace and works are contrary to each other. You can't have them both together. Otherwise, work is no more work. All right. Verse seven talks about um, national issues. Uh, is they have, they've been blinded. Uh, we'll I'll just let the scripture say it. What then? Paul has another question. What then? Israel hath not obtained that which it, he seeketh for, but the election hath obtained it. And the rest were blinded. So Paul's explaining to us, Israel as a nation fell. They missed Christ. They missed salvation. But those out of Israel, the elect, they have obtained salvation. The rest, those who harden their hearts, the rest were blinded. So there's a blindness that happens. And I declare today, I see, it sounds, does sound crazy, I see blindness <laughs> because I'm trying, I'm, I'm sitting back seeing all the stuff that's going on in the world today. Mm -hmm. I'm watching people literally call a lie the truth and a truth a lie. Mm -hmm. 
And I'm trying to figure out why the masses cannot see. When I look at scriptures like this, I understand that there's some people, because they've turned from the ways of God, their hearts and minds are blinded. And the only way they can see is because of the gospel. Once they receive Christ, the blindness are removed. But Israel is blinded. God has a purpose. God has brought, you know, and this is a place, this is a place that's offers the grass. God has brought this blindness. God has allowed, in, in the, I think as the Thessalonians talks about how God's going to send a strong delusion to those who do not believe the truth. God's going to send strong delusions. People are going to be deluded to thinking that things, I just don't understand. I understand it because it's a spiritual situa situation. How you can, you can actually see a person, record a person lying, have proof a person's lying, and people will back them up and say it's the truth. This is a this is to me it's beyond um there it's beyond a natural understanding. This is a spiritual blindness. Mm -hmm. This is a blindness you you want, you you accept, you want to believe. You you believe to the point a man's words, no matter how twisted they are. Nobody in this earth ought to be that important to you that no matter what they say, you believe it. Everybody's words have to be laid on God's word. Yeah. So I see a blindness going on, delusion going on today. And it reminds me of so much. We studied the book of Revelation. I think it's around chapter 13 when the whole world is uh, going after the beast. And now I can understand how um, someone could be, someone could rise up and influence people to the place they can no longer see abstract truth. They can no longer understand that what people are telling you aren't true and really go for it and re be willing to die for it. I heard a woman um, on TV not recently say that my president doesn't wear a mask and nor do I. Mm. <laughs> and um, it's like, you know, it's, 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 it's mind boggling. We'll but these are the days that we are living in today. All right. These are the kind of days we're living in. But here's a blindness scene we read about in uh, Scripture. Paul's explaining that the um, those out of Israel, the elect, hath obtained it. The rest were what? Blinded. So only a small portion of the Israelites believe today. The rest are blinded. And then Paul says, "This is not a. This is not a. Uh, this is not a new doctrine I'm teaching because everything Paul is teaching, he's pulling from a lot from a book of Isaiah." Many verses. I wish we could take time in your time of study. Just go back when Paul says it's been said and run reference. You'll see that Paul is preaching from the from Old Testament scripture. New Testament was not written at this time. It was still being written, being made. But Paul is speaking, preaching from Old Testament. So when he says it is written, he's referring to Old Testament text. Verse um, 8 says, according as what? As is written. God had given, listen to this y'all, this is Half us a grasp. This said the devil did this. It says God had given them the spirit of slumber. God did it. Eyes that they should not see, and ears that they should not hear until this day. So God has taken the, the nation itself, chosen the nation of Israel itself, chosen out a small portion of it, and blinded the remainder of them. I tell y'all, uh, I tell people all the time, everybody, people want to stay, especially new believers, want to stay in New Testament. You got to go to the Old Testament and see who God really is. <laughs> because uh, Old Testament is the foundation for the new. You don't start a building from the ceiling. You start a building on this foundation. And the New Testament is explained in the Old. So we have explanation coming in the New Testament. It explains what happened in the Old Testament. So we see that the Bible is... Now, I'm not reading the foreign word. Did y'all read what I read? It says... What it says as written? It says God did it. God gave him a what? A spirit of slumber. God gave him eyes. But what? The eyes really couldn't see. He's not speaking of physical sight. He's talking about spiritual sight. God gave them ears. But what? They couldn't hear. 
That's why when the book of Revelation you hear, you'll see those of eyes to ears to hear and eyes to see, hear what God is saying. So these are eyes. So you ought to thank God is God is giving you spiritual perception. Uh, that's a gift from God. Corinthians tells us in chapter 2, I believe it is, eyes have not seen, nor have ears heard, neither has it entered the heart of men the things that God has prepared for those who love him. You can't achieve this by natural understanding. God has to do this. Spiritually discerning. God is the one that does it. He said in John 3, he talks about that you cannot see the kingdom except you be born again. Nor can you enter the kingdom unless you're born again. So some things there's no capacity for until new birth comes takes place. So he, you can have eyes and not see, not see it, ears and not hear. But God, when that heart turns to the Lord, God opens the eyes and opens the ears. But right now, God has a purpose in what he's doing. It sounds strange to us, but we got to keep on reading. It sounds strange that God would literally blind uh, his chosen people, only take a remnant out. But we saw what he did to Pharaoh. He told Pharaoh, we read it, didn't we? I raised you up for this purpose so I can show my power through you. Pharaoh thought he was in charge. Who is a God that I would tell me to let my people, let these people go? These are my slaves. What happened? God did what he did. He showed many signs. And before it was over with, Pharaoh was saying, get up out of here. You know how crazy it was? The people, of the, 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 their captors, the Egyptians, gave the children of Israel Jewels and wealth before they left. Isn't that something? And you know, in time your captain wants you to leave that bed, they're going to pay you to leave. That's pretty good. Isn't it? Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> he says, um, he gives other ex example in David. He says, and David says this, and this is in the song. Let that table be made a snare and a, a trap and a, a stumbling block and a recompense unto them. The table. He's speaking of all those privileges and all the things God had given to Israel. Instead of them using them, the scriptures, the, the rich heritage of, of Abraham, instead of them using these things, it became a snare to them. They rested in the physical part. They rested in the fact that they thought at one time, they kept saying when, when God was about to destroy Israel, destroy the city of Jerusalem, they kept saying the temple of the Lord, the temple of the Lord is here. But they were saying, because God's house is here, God's not going to let them happen to us. No matter how we live, we got what? Our good luck charm, the temple. Some people think that if I hold my Bible, it'll make me spiritual. <laughs> if I put one on my coffee table, people walk in and see the Bible, that's going to bring blessing. Some folk even try to sleep on the Bible. Mm -hmm. Think of keeping mad, bad dreams. It's like a, the Bible is not a lucky charm, a, a, a rabbit's foot. <laughs> but what's powerful is not the Bible pages, it's the words of the Bible. You got to get God's word. You can't, you can't memorize God's word by sleeping on top of the Bible. You can't understand God's word by sleeping on top of the Bible. You got to open the Bible, you got to crack your Bible. And my kids had a shirt where they say, crack your Bible and get hooked on Jesus. Crack get, high. Bible, get high with you. Get high with you. Yeah, you got to crack the Bible. You got to get in the word of God. Amen. And know what the word of God is saying. He says, David said, so the very privileges they had, David said, let that table, the things God had. You know how Psalm 23 says he prepared the table? It's for the things God has prepared for them. Let that table become what? A snare. That's a trap. That's like a bear trap or a mouse trap. Let it be a trap. A trap, a snare, a trap, and a stumbling block. They fall over it. They were falling over the things. Why? Because God had blinded them. They couldn't see. They really couldn't see, so they fell over things. And a recompense or a payback to them, unto them. Verse 10. And the eyes be darkened. This is some something, ain't it? Let the eyes be darkened that they may not see and bow down their back always. This is what God says about the Jews. All right? But now he talks about, so we, he see the testimony of Paul, the testimony of Elijah. Then we look at the testimony of the Gentiles. Verse 11 says this. I say then, have they stumbled that they should fall? Speaking of the Israelites, have they stumbled that they should fall? He says, God forbid. But rather, through, now look at this. God has a plan. Through their fall, what's happened? Salvation has come to the Gentiles. 
So Israelites fall is only temporary and it's only limited. And while God has them in slumber and sleep and blindness, God is doing something else. He's saving Gentiles. Amen. And that's where you and I come in. It's through their fall because they have rejected. God is now giving salvation to Gentiles. And we're supposed to have something so special about us that a Jewish unbeliever, even an unbeliever, could look at us and be jealous at our lifestyle. Isn't that something? Mm -hmm. so let me tell you the stuff the world is looking for. God has it. Yes. And because we're God's people, that means we have it. When someone is rich and they keep buying stuff and they're never satisfied, it's because things can't satisfy. Not at all. Amen. 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 Things can't satisfy. So we know that things can't satisfy. But the Bible says we are complete in Christ. Christ is the only one that can fill that spot of purpose. He's the only one that can give satisfaction. And we spend our lives trying to... Uh, I remember when I was young, friends meant everything. I was trying to find me a best friend. Every time I tried to find me a best friend, that best friend would let me down. And i say, you're not a best friend. I need a best friend. And I'm looking around for a best friend. Never could find a best friend. And I thank God I couldn't find a best friend. Because not finding a best human friend pushed me to Jesus Christ to make him a best friend. So everything you're looking for. People are looking for satisfaction, but only Christ satisfies. What are people looking for? When some young lady gets on social media or walks outside and she has everything hanging out, so men can draw attention. What is she saying? She's saying, I want to be loved. She's saying, I want you to find me attractive and want me and desire me. And so she feels like she has to bear her body to pull men in so she can feel desired. She can feel wanted. She can feel special. But then you meet Jesus one day. And then you find out how he views you. Amen. Amen. How that all those men will do is get what they can get out of you and then leave you broken. But Jesus Christ loves you and always loves you. He, he doesn't want you for what he can get out of you or what you can provide for him. He wants to be your provision, your provider. So what the world is looking for, people are looking, you know, they go to this thing called happy hour. A lot of those are being cut out now, so people are going to be going crazy. Because they feel like I had a rough day at work. All I need is a drink. I got to I gotta get this. And some Christians like this too, y'all. We got a lot of sipping saints out there. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I got I to gotta, I gotta go out and have some fun. I got to get on that dance floor. I got to drop it. I got to swing it. I got to do something to have some joy in my life. So that joy is external. That joy is based on their surroundings. It's not really joy. It's just little frills of happiness. Happiness depends on what's happening. They need something outside of themselves to find joy. So that's the world is seeking a good time. The world is seeking to be happy. They want to be, uh, you know, joyous. They want to party. They want to feel good about life and feel good about themselves. They think I need something to enhance my life because my life sucks pretty much. So if I can just drown out my pain, if I can just smoke out my pain, then I'll be all right. But then... After the drink and the high, what happens eventually? It goes down. You lose that high. And then life hit, happens. So what I need, I need stronger drink. I need more drugs. Matter of fact, I want to stay drunk and high all the time because I don't like life. So what are they looking for? They're looking for, they're looking for joy. Looking for when Jesus says that he gives you joy. Mm -hmm. The Holy Spirit, the fruit of the Spirit is joy. Nehemiah says, but the joy of the Lord is my strength. Rejoice in the Lord. Proverbs, I mean, uh, Philippians tells us, rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice, and Paul is writing this from prison. So joy is not dependent on my circumstances. Joy comes from my connection and my relationship with God. The presence of God's Holy Spirit gives me joy. And you can have joy no matter what the situation is. Because the joy you have is not your own. The world didn't give it. And the world can't take it away. So we have lives. Like, 
Our lives are supposed to be that people will look on and say, you know what? I, what is going on? What makes you tick? I need to know how. What is the, the joy? What is the peace you have? What is this way about you? That's what being a real witness is. Because people can hear our words and look at our lives and say, mm-mm. They can hear our words and watch our attitudes. Our complaining, just like the rest of them. And our griping. And our backbiting. And our talking about each other. And our maliciousness. They hear all this stuff and they say, I thought you went to church. But if church ain't doing you no good, why should I, why go? Should I go? If it's not changing your attitude, why should I go? If you that nasty you go to church, then I don't need what you got. I, I'm all right in my bottom. <laughs> Amen. Amen. But God is saying here that he has blessed the Gentiles so that the Jews can look upon them and be envious that God was blessing their lives and want to know maybe this Messiah is real. Mm -hmm. All right. And then we have to, I'm going to take, well, let me just stop right here. So I'm going to stop and we'll pick it up at verse 11. Again, I'll, I'll launch off there verse Lord willing on next week because I want to spend, make sure we have time to pray and to see if anyone has any comments or questions. We want to live those kind of lives, y'all. Amen. That stirs people up. It's, everybody's not going to love you now. I'm not saying that. Some people, when you get around, you stir those demons up inside of them. <laughs> Amen. Because the spirit of Christ is in your life. So let your light so shine before men so they can see your good works and glorify the Father which is in heaven. Anybody before we have our closing prayer? Again, we thank God for each one of you tonight and all that God is doing in your life. We thank God for our Facebook audience. We thank God for the homes we're able to come in. And we want to recommend Christ to everyone. If you need joy, you need peace, you need to feel a sense of purpose, Jesus Christ has all that and more. He will make your life new. How do I know? I know because I read it, and I also know because I've experienced it. I've experienced a complete life in Christ Jesus. Amen. Amen. So we recommend Christ today. If you confess him with your mouth and believe in your heart, that God raised him today, he'll bring salvation to your home right now. You don't have to shake a preacher's hand. You don't have to join. You don't have to walk to anybody aisle. You can do right where you are right now, your coffee table, your living room, your dining room. You can say, Lord Jesus, I want that joy. I want your peace. I want to know you. I repent of my sins, and I take you as my Savior and Lord. And he'll come in and save you today. And amen. Because he's a mighty good Savior. He's a mighty good Savior. Sister Hope, Vivian Hope, lead us in our closing prayer. Oh, all right. She's still there. She's still there. Maybe she's on mute. Dr. Boya, uh, take up for her tonight. Wonderful Savior. Mm. We just thank you for that. That you care about everything that we are con that concerns us, Lord God. Yes. Every little small thing that yes. we have, Lord, that is irritating us or, or bothering us, oh Lord, you are concerned about it. And we thank you for it. We pray, Lord, for it. And we thank you, Father, that you sit high and you look low and you see your children everywhere. Yes. But Father, we know that you love us. Yes, God, you love us. You love us, Lord. You love us. Everlasting love. Yes, God. You love us, Lord. You love us, God. Well, we don't know what to do, Lord God. You don't know which way to turn. You show us the way, Lord God. Yes, God. You have wisdom. You have knowledge. You have wisdom, our strength. Yes. You are our doctor. Yes. Yes. You are our deliverer. Yes, God. God. And there is nothing that we need 
Mm. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes. Yes, the Lord. Yes. Yes, God. Yes, God. Thank you for blessings. Thank you for mercies, God. Mm. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Lean your hands. Yes. Hallelujah. We thank you, Lord. Mm. That you just sound, you put a sound on our lips mm. to keep us from saying the wrong thing. Thank you, Lord. And Lord, I thank you. Mm. I thank you. Thank you, Lord. I thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. That you keep on training us. Yes, God. Mm. And that you are going to heal us, Lord God. And when we are lonely, we know that you will never leave us nor forsake us. Thank you, Lord. We know that we can go to the hospital and we can come out Mm. knowing that you're taking care of us, Lord God. Yes, Lord. We Mm. don't have no fear Mm. of what the enemy might put on us, Lord Mm. God. Yes, God. Because we win with you yes. on the earth, and we win with you in heaven. in heaven. Yes, we do, God. Lord, I just thank you. Hallelujah. I just praise you, Lord. Praise God. your name, God. Every aching pain in my body, I mm. still praise you, Lord Yes, God. God. Touch her, God. In thank Jesus' you, name. God. Touch her right now. No matter now. how I feel, I'm still praise Hallelujah. you, Hallelujah. Mm. No matter what I go through, I'm still going to praise you, Lord yes, God. Yes, God. Mm. Exalting you. Yes, God. My Lord and my Savior, Lord God. I exalt you tonight. Mm. Lord, it's not far from you. Yes, God. To save me. Hallelujah. Lord, yes. Hallelujah. And I praise you, Lord God. I praise you, God. I thank you for the apples, Lord God. Thank you, Lord I Jesus. Thank you for the word that's coming forth, Lord thank God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Mm. I thank you for what you're doing. Give you glory. Mm. Thank you, Lord God. Yes. And his ministry, Lord God. Yes, Lord. Please, God, I need you. Yes, God. That it's by your grace, it's by your grace mercy, God. God. Please, oh God. We thank you, Lord, for everybody that's listening. Yes. And on, the, on, the, on the computer or whatever, Lord God. Mm-hmm. That their lives will be touched. Please, God, touch, touch, word, touch, God. touch, touch. And that we will have a change yes. of attitude. Yes, God. A change of thinking, Lord yes, God. Yes, God. Touch our a minds. A change of living, Lord God. Touch our lives, Lord God. Mm. There's some things we just don't need in our lives. Mm. We don't need a whole lot of dresses and a whole lot of shoes mm-hmm. and a whole lot of clothes. We don't need a whole lot of this and a whole lot of that. But we need a whole lot of you. Lord yes, God. God, we need you. This mm. is a time that you Can't are make showing us you. more of you, Lord God. Mm. You're showing us more of your love and your power, Lord God. Mm. Oh, steps Lord of God. God. That we go and do things differently, Lord God. Yes. But we do them by your instructions, yes, Lord God. God. So we just thank you. Mm, thank Keep you. Keep on using us, Lord God. Please, God. Use us for your Have glory, your way, God. Have your way. And we will continue to lift your name, Lord yes, God. Yes, we lift you, God. And we give you all the praise. All the praise. The all the glory. glory. And we just say amen. 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 Hallelujah. Amen. <coughs> amen. Amen. We thank you. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you for that heartfelt prayer. I felt that prayer. I pray right with you. I thank God for that prayer. God, we serve is awesome. God bless you, family. God bless you. Love y'all. I pray for God's protection, His fullest health and strength. I pray his peace upon your homes. I yes. pray his protection for your lives. And know that yes. under his wings, you can trust. Yes. God bless you. Love Amen. y'all. Amen. Have a wonderful weekend. Amen.